pediatric thyroid disorder part 2 in this lesson i will discuss about hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism is defined as excessive thyroid hormone secretion almost exclusively hyperthyroidism is due to gravis disease in more than 95 percent of patients and there is some genetic causes which might be autosomal dominant and sometimes sporadic cases of mutated thyroid stimulating hormone receptors that are constitutively activated other causes include thyroid carcinoma toxic adenoma autoimmune thyroiditis which is a hyperthyroidism phase of hypothyroidism or hashitotoxicosis phase subacute thyroiditis thyrotoxicosis factitia macunal bright syndrome and others uh, when we see the most common cause of hyperthyroidism which is gravis disease gravis disease is an autoimmune disorder in which thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin activate thyroid stimulating hormone receptors increasing production of thyroid hormone and causing thyroid hyperplasia the prevalence of gravis disease is 1 in 5000 pediatric patients and the female to male ratio is around 5 to 1 so it is predominant in female when we see clinical presentation of hyperthyroidism or gravis disease classic gravis include a triad of hyperthyroidism dermopathy and ophthalmopathy dermopathy is characterized by uh, myxedema which is rare in children whereas ophthalmic finding is present in up to 50 to 80 per percent of patients and usually this ophthalmologic finding is mild in children and the ophthalmologic finding of gravis disease is multifactorial lead retraction and the lead lag is secondary to symptomatic effect of hyperthyroidism which reverses with treatment other eye symptoms such as exophthalmos results from autoimmune reaction to the muscles and the fibroblasts in the eye which is not reversible with hyperthyroid treatment so lead retraction and the lead drag which is secondary to symptomatic effect of hyperthyroidism is reversible whereas those due to autoimmune reaction to muscles and the fibroblasts in the eye which causes exophthalmos is not reversible with hyperthyroid treatment when we see clinical presentation patients with graves disease is hyperactive and nervousness emotional liability having declining skill performance weight loss despite good or increased appetite heat intolerance and sweating palpitations muscle weakness and insomnia can be there on examination goiter is present in 99% of gravis disease and the thyroid brood tachycardia and hypertension exophthalmos and the periorbital edema tremors and exaggerated deep tender reflex can be there a child with gravis disease can have thyroid storm which is a life threatening complication due to sudden release of excessive amount of thyroid hormone and is characterized by fever altered mental status extreme signs and the symptoms of hyperthyroidism including heart failure this thyroid storm is diagnosed clinically but we can confirm it by doing the thyroid function test and the patient should be monitored in intensive care and we should have to send if there is no intensive care in our setup to better setup and this thyroid storm is precipitated by neck trauma most of the time regarding investigation of gravis disease gravis disease is the most common cause of hyperthyroidism in children and it is characterized by elevated t4 and the decreased thyroid stimulating hormone and the thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin can be present and the thyroid scan is also useful and uh, on long bone long bone x-ray can tell us advanced skeletal maturation in hypothyroidism there is delayed skeletal maturation compared to the patient's age whereas in gravis disease or hyperthyroidism there is advanced skeletal maturation bone age is older than the patient's age when we see treatment of gravis disease medical therapy is a treatment of choice for pediatric population and medical therapy alone has a key rate in 30 to 80 percent medical therapy include metimazole and the ptu both inhibit iodide incorporation and they may also suppress thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin metimazole is 10 times more potent than ptu and metimazole has a longer half-life metimazole is a drug of choice as ptu can cause severe hepatic disease both can cause agranulocytosis and sometimes also 
in addition to metimazole or pitium beta blockers such as propranolol and atenolol can be given for severely thyrotoxic patients high dose prednisolone can also be given for those who have severe ophthalmopathy the other treatment is radioactive iodine radioactive iodine is has a cure rate more than 90% and it, it can be a first line treatment for patients greater than 10 years of age and the problem is this radioactive iodine can cause permanent hypothyroidism and sometimes it can also worsen ophthalmopathy radioactive iodine is indicated if severe effects from medical therapy or failure of medical management the other treatment modality is surgical subtotal or total thyroidotomy has a cure rate around 90% and initial treatment with antithyroid medication is preferred before surgical intervention majority of gland is removed to prevent recurrence and the complication of surgical treatment of graves disease having hypothyroidism hypoparathyroidism damage to recurrent laryngeal nerve and it is indicated if severe effects from medical therapy or if there is failure of medical management and sometimes orbital decompression can be done for severe ophthalmopathy if it is not responding to high dose steroid prognosis of graves disease is 25 percent of them have remission after two years on therapy and 50 percent by five years on therapy outpatient follow-up is done by thyroid function test which should be done every two to three months and review signs and the symptoms of hypo and hyperthyroidism on follow-up and the caution against trauma to the neck to prevent thyroid stone should be counseled. Avoidance of adrenergic agents, such as sympathomatic agents, which can exacerbate hyperthyroid symptoms, is recommended. The other issues about congenital hyperthyroidism or neonatal gravis, which is responsible for 1% of pediatric gravis disease. When we see the etiology and the pathogenesis of neonatal gravis disease, Neonatal Graves disease is caused by transplacental passage of thyroid receptor stimulating antibodies from mother's registry of Graves disease. These mothers can have active Graves disease, Graves disease in remission, or prior history of Graves disease treated with radioiodine ablation or thyroidectomy. So the mother is not expected to have active disease to have a baby with neonatal Graves disease. High levels of thyroid receptor stimulating antibody typically result in classic neonatal hyperthyroidism. But if mother has been treated with antithyroid drugs such as metimazole or PTU, the onset of hyperthyroid symptoms may be delayed by 3 to 7 days until the antithyroid drug is metabolized by the neonate. If thyroid receptor blocking antibodies are also present, the onset of hyperthyroidism can also be delayed for several weeks or neonatal hypothyroidism may even develop. Neonatal hyperthyroidism occurs in approximately 2% of infants born to mothers with history of Graves' disease. So more than 98% of those neonates who are born to mothers with history of Graves' disease doesn't have neonatal hyperthyroidism. In utero, fatal tachycardia and goiter may suggest the diagnosis, and close ultrasound surveillance is recommended in mothers with uncontrolled hyperthyroidism, particularly in the third trimester. Elevated serum titers of thyroid receptor stimulating antibody, more than three times the upper limit of normal, or a history of period child with neonatal thyroid dysfunction increases the likelihood of neonatal Graves disease. Neonatal Graves disease typically remits spontaneously within six to 12 weeks, but it can persist longer, depending on the titer and the rate of clearance of the thyroid receptor stimulating antibody and thyroid receptor blocking antibody if present. Rarely, classic neonatal Graves disease might not remit but persist for several years or longer and these children typically have a firm history of family history of Graves disease and in this infant, transfer of maternal thyroid receptor stimulating antibody exacerbates the infantile onset of autonomous Graves disease. When we see clinical manifestation of neonatal Graves disease, many infants born with neonatal Graves disease are premature and IGR. They might have goiter and occasionally tracheal compression can occur if the goiter is very large. Other signs and symptoms of neonatal Graves include low birth weight, stare and periorbital edema and retraction of eyelids, hyperthermia, irritability, 
diarrhea feeding difficulty and poor weight gain tachycardia heart failure and hypertension organomegaly thrombocytopenia and hyperviscosity can be seen when we see laboratory findings in the case of neonatal gravis disease suppressed serum tsh and elevated serum levels of t4 free t4 and t3 can be seen and the thyroid receptor stimulating antibodies are markedly elevated at birth and the typical result within three months of life treatments of neonatal gravis disease include it should be initiated at the onset of symptoms to avoid short-term and long-term complications therapy consists of metimazole around 0.5 to 1 mg per kg per 24 hour in bid dose and then selective beta adrenergic blockers such as propranolol to decrease sympathetic hyperactivity in refractory cases lugol solution or potassium iodide one to two drops per day can be added this lugol iodide the first dose of iodide should be given at least one hour after the first dose of anti-thyroid drugs to prevent the iodide from being used for further thyroid hormone synthesis if thyrotoxicosis is severe and progress to heart failure parenteral fluid therapy corticosteroid and digitalization may be indicated once serum thyroid hormone levels began to decrease anti-thyroid medication should be gradually tapered to keep the infant euthyroid occasionally a block and a replace method with concurrent anti-thyroid drug and the thyroid hormone replacement therapy might be required to ensure euthyroidism most cases of neonatal graves disease remits by three months of age but occasionally neonatal hyperthyroidism persists into childhood neonatal hyperthyroidism without evidence for autoimmune disease in mother or infant might be caused by mutation in the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor gene that result in constitutive activation of the receptor and this can be transmitted in autosomal dominant manner or can occur sporadically neonatal hyperthyroidism has also been reported in patients with macunal bright syndrome because of an activating mutation of the stimulatory alpha subunit of the g protein under the circumstances hyperthyroidism recurs when anti-thyroid drugs are discontinued and the children eventually must be treated with radioiodine or surgery when we see progress of neonatal gravis disease advanced bone maturation microcephaly and the cognitive impairment can occur when treatment is delayed intellectual development is normal in most treated infants with neonatal gravis disease although some manifest neurocognitive problems from in utero hyperthyroidism in some infants in utero hyperthyroidism appear to suppress the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid feedback mechanism and they develop transient or permanent central hypothyroidism that requires thyroid hormone replacement neurocognitive development should be monitored throughout childhood so this is all about hyperthyroidism thank you for watching